Hello and welcome to this week's coffee vlog. It's now Friday, the 18th of September, and uh, I'm just out and about on the Friday afternoon, to be honest. So, a uh, bit of a different route, so I thought I'd take you along. And uh, what sort of week's it been this week? It's not been so bad, really, actually, for a change. You know, not terrible. Um, not overworked, but a fair few decent things have come in, so that's been pretty good. Um, I have finally, finally managed to watch the um, the Apple event in total. Um, did take two nights, split it up, because it was about an hour and a, well over an hour and a half, I think. So it was a fair length event. Um, I wasn't quite pleased that I watched it late at night in bed on the Apple TV. Um, just to make it even harder to be tempted to purchase any of the new shiny Apple goodies. Um, because really, I was watching it, and one thing that really struck me was um, Apple are very good at selling the products, especially the event, because although my roundup last week was pretty much covered everything, you know, from what I'd read about all the new features and whatever, oh, that's a fancy that van with Iron Man on there. Um, oh well, hopefully you can see it on the uh, the left on the the dash cam. It's uh, yeah, it's Iron Man and um, the other thing. I forget what it's called now. Anyway, um, so that's lovely. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, so yeah, generally the roundup was pretty much spot on what the main things were but some of the features you sort of watch the event and you're like uh, really from what I've heard about and read about what was going on it was kind of like yeah, not so great and then you watch the event and they go through everything and you're like wow actually that's pretty cool uh, certainly with the iPhone um, the, the force touch which is now 3d touch um, suddenly, you know, it's got force touch on the watch, but it's 3D touch if it's on the phones, just to confuse everyone. Thanks, Apple. Um, then actually, you can see the use for that all of a sudden when you can press on an app icon and it brings up a menu. Force touch on an app icon, and they sort of sneak peek for mail and stuff. That was, um, you know, that was quite well sold as a new quality feature. Um, so on the whole, yeah, I think Apple do a really good job. All, everything that they rolled out made more sense seeing the the actual event as opposed to reading about it wherever else. Um, things like the, the iPad Pro and, and its um, pencil, Apple Pencil. Um, you know, you, I read about it and I'm like, oh, that doesn't make no sense at all, me. And, they, and you, you sort of see all the video review it and you're like, oh, well, of course, it makes sense for artists and people who do digital art and digital drawing because you know they're going to be able to do intricate digital works with it using the pencil so that sort of thing you know it suddenly made a lot more sense seeing it in action than compared to just reading about it um, probably what would be better for Apple is if they could get more potential customers to watch the Apple event as opposed to just it being everyone who's into Apple. So, um, because you know, I think a lot more people would convert across to their products if they, they just watched the event and, and saw all the different features up front in the event. So, um, but on the whole, I, you know, it's an hour and a half long, it's a long event, but I, I quite enjoyed watching through it. Um, even though I'm not going to be purchasing anything that was featured in the event. Um, well, not in the immediate future, anyway. Uh, it was still a good watch. It was very interesting. Um, talking about watches, the Apple Watch. Um, some of the sort of... the What they highlighted on that, they're going to be doing with the, the new Watch OS 2. Um, on the medical side, that was quite amazing. Seeing the, you know, the sort of thing where a, a doctor a medical person can um, view stats on patients via the watch 
uh, and even um, contact them. And even, I think there was the evidence of like um, a pregnant lady at home being able to pass on not only her heartbeat through the watch, but also the baby's heartbeat. Um, so a doctor can remotely check the, the status of a lot of a baby and hear that, which is that's kind of cutting edge amazing stuff. But um, yeah, our, the Apple TV was probably one of the most interesting potentially things for me. Um, which really, it seems like Apple have reinvented the Wii as a media streaming box. <laughs> um, and of course, I've still got a Wii. I've still got a Wii and um, the Wii remotes and you wave them about and people used to break the tellies lobbing them at the, the remotes at the tellies. Um, well, the new Apple remote, well, it's, it's going to be small and compact and light, isn't it, being Apple? Uh, the new remote, so it'll probably bounce off your telly if you, you accidentally throw it. Uh, although it does look kind of slippery, like that aluminium, black aluminium finish. Black aluminium, actually, it's not. Current Apple TVs have a, um, a normal aluminium colour. So um, it's going to be interesting see if um, how slippy it is, though, for waving it about. But, I mean, a lot of the features, the gaming features on the new Apple TV look very cool. Um, especially that ability to, to drop in via iPad or iPhone so you can have group games and that sort of thing. But it does it does still remind me of a Wii. Um, so uh, you'll have to look out for um, the um, sort of eye, the eye board. For, for fitness. It'll go with a watch, imagine, an eye board. You can stand on it and wiggle about on it and stuff. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see, won't it? We come up with something like that. But uh, on the whole, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, not really sure there's anything in there I'm desperate for at the moment. So um, I won't be picking up an Apple TV, you know, like the new ones. I've got two of the third gens as it is. And I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the third gen is going to get the TVOS, just it won't get as many of the features. Um, but I still haven't really found out if that's going to happen or not. I suppose we'll wait and see. So, um, as far as watch goes, it seems iOS 9 was deployed on Wednesday night to everyone. Um, last Friday, I went up to 9.1 off the iOS 9 beta 5. Um, I thought I'd go to the 9.1 beta rather than the GM build. Um, so I had to restore to the 9.1 beta Ipshu um, and, and I, I didn't think about it, you know, you don't think about these things do you? Um, I think I should have turned the watch off before doing that, because what happened, I wasn't expecting it, after restoring it and it's chugging away, putting everything back post-restore, uh, I noticed my watch was on um, the like um, little setup thing and uh, it had it totally wiped the watch and then I had to restore the watch from back up again. Um, which, you know, it wipes the watch if you unpair it and or you can set to wipe it, but if you unpair it, it also just sort of kind of wipes the whole thing out. So um, that was a bit of a pain because it restored. I, I don't think it had a very recent backup. So I think the backup was from, uh, well, when we'd have had a last software update. In fact, there was a software update I did after that, wasn't there? So it was some time beforehand. Um, and of course it wouldn't, if you unpair the watch, it does a backup automatically within the watch app for the watch. Um, but because I just restored the issue without warning to the watch or anything else or thinking about what I maybe ought to do before restoring the issue, um, I don't think there was any backup done just because, you know, we just did a restore and that was it. Um, I backed up the phone before I restored this backing up the phone maybe but I didn't look at actually the dates on the the watch after that. Hmm. Hmm. So not sure about that anyway. So uh restored to 9.1 on the whole wasn't too bad. Um took a while 
to um, sync stuff back again and then seem to have a, a few woes with different apps not syncing properly. Um, and battery life, funny enough, initially, first couple of days, battery life seemed to be horrible. And I was like, oh, what? Because I was getting really good battery on Beta 5, and I thought, oh, I've gone backwards now. How can this work? But then it got lots, lots better, which led me to a bit of a theory that the um, the new features in iOS 9, like this spotlight integrated search of everything, and it's a bit like when you restore your Mac OS X. And um, that sort of does <sighs> spends after the first restore indexing everything. And in the same way, I think what's happened is uh, with iOS 9, the first few days after you've installed it fresh or upgraded to it or whatever else, it's still indexing everything chugging away indexing so um, I think that's really what was happening because the first few days the battery life wasn't I mean it wasn't terrible in fact I probably still had about 50% left on a night when I was going to sleep but it, it wasn't as good as it had been it was there was a noticeable difference there so um, I thought all right well we'll see how we get on and it's improved uh, in fact, you know, I've got end of working day yesterday at like um, six o'clock, so after having done pretty much 11 hours off charge, and it was on like 85%, so fantastic battery. I mean, I've not used it much, you know, that's the thing, it doesn't, but it's that sort of ability to just do standing. Um, you know, if it's sat on standby and just dishing up notifications and whatever else and not being used for much else, you shouldn't use that much battery in 11 hours if you're not looking at it all the time and watching videos and browsing the web and whatever else and using the screen time, then it should drain very slowly. So, um, so that improves. So I am wondering if people will kind of find that as they're upgrading to iOS 9, initial first few days is not going to be that great battery then it improves as the sort of the OS levels itself out and finishes indexing stuff so um, that's going to be quite interesting to see um, watch OS 2 isn't out yet uh, well, I don't think it is I, I know this it was delayed because there were some bugs some bugs in watch OS shock horror uh, <laughs> yeah just some um, and uh, so, as of yet, no one's got it. Uh, no one, no one's got it except developers still. So, um, but also this week got my first third-party complication. Yay! Um, the first. Well, I mean, I had to find, go and well, not find, go and no, uh, do. I think it was round about this. So. It's not actually roundabout though because they painted it away or got rid of it anyway. Um, but yes, first third party complication, the weather channel, which is an app I didn't have, but I saw it had a complication, so I immediately went and got it. It's free. They're always the best ones, aren't they? Um, so that's got a complication, um, which is just an umbrella and then a percentage, which is chance for rain. But it's something, you know. I mean, coming from the pebble where you could have multiple different watch faces and all sorts of little things and even animations and whatever else. Um, the Apple Watch is a bit limited there. I mean, there's quite a range of faces, but it's still kind of limited that there's no third party. So the, these sort of extra complications as they come through, little snippets of data that can be displayed on Apple's faces, uh, it's going to be better. Um, so I was quite excited about that just pick things up a bit um, I did last night and this morning have a bit of a uh, bit of an error with the watch I uh, I fell asleep last night 
no surprise there, uh, with the watch on. Um, again, I tend to do that a fair bit. Um, so I woke up at um, 3 a.m. or something like that, I think it was. Oh, I'm going to put watch on charge. Look it about. And I put it on the charger, and then I got back into bed. I thought, I, I think I need to check, because I don't remember seeing the green charge circle popping up when I put it on. I wonder if I'm not getting it on right, because um, although it's magnetic, you can sort of put it on and it doesn't click in right and it won't start the inductive charging. So, and I kind of had this, oh, I don't know. And then I was in bed and I couldn't be bothered and I just went to sleep again. Uh, it's at seven o'clock um, when I, I got up, half an hour after the alarm started, I kept sleeping. Um, seven o'clock I got up and uh, and put it on charge, it was still there. But amazingly, it was on 47%. Um, and that was from off charge at sort of seven o'clock the day before. So 24 hours, 47% battery still. So that's not by going for watchOS GM. Um, so I was pleased with that, but of course I didn't want to risk, I might have got today out done really, but um, what are we on now? 78% now, uh, because I put it on charge at seven o'clock from 47%. Um, took it off at 10 to eight, 50 minutes later, and I was at 97% from 47%. So uh, it did 50% in 50 minutes, or a percent a minute, if you want to put it that way. Uh, so that's, you know, charge time's pretty good actually, um, as well. So that wasn't even really a disaster that it had, um, it had not charged that overnight when I put it on, well, three o'clock in the morning, whatever I put it on. So, yeah, generally the, the watch is going well with battery, certainly. I think when watchOS 2 finally drops full release, um, I am going to unpair the watch and then repair it as new and not restore from backup because I'm getting a few little niggles now where some app notifications aren't doing the sound and vibration. Um, and I had that initially when I put Watch OS 2 initial on um, with Mail. Mail wasn't doing it at all, which kind of meant you just didn't know you got a notification until you went and looked and then saw the red dot and went and saw you had missed notifications. Um, so, and what fixed it for that mail on the initial one, because I restored from backup from watchOS 1, um, was I set the watch up as new. So I'm thinking maybe once the, the full version's out, I'm not actually sure I've worked out how I'm gonna end up getting off the GM watchOS 2 to the release watchOS. I'm presuming unpairing and then repairing, it will update because it's a newer model new version or because I don't have the developer profile installed not sure mm. so we'll see about that not sure but we'll perhaps see um, so yeah that's pretty much it for the out of Apple event um, and sort of watch OS and iOS 9 I'm sure everyone um, has been eagerly downloading iOS 9 now it's available to the public and giving it a go so We'll see. Uh, we'll see what everyone thinks of it, um, and if they think it's a worthwhile update. Um, I'm just trying to think what I'm going to cover next because I'm probably going to do the run back up to Halifax as well. So that's going to give me lots of time, and we're not far off from where I'm going. So, I don't want to start on too much and then run out on the way back again, I don't think. So, uh, I just set off from the petrol station, even though I not bought petrol. One of those people going to the petrol station and not buying petrol, that's shocking. Um, I was actually dropping off a parcel. Um, one of these My Hermes parcels. Um, I've got to admit, I've I fell out two years ago with Hermes um, after they the single-handedly managed to completely fail and deliver a parcel twice. Well, actually, they claim they delivered it uh, into the shed in my back garden that I don't have. Um, 
and at a time when everyone was in the house so they'd have had to go past us in the house looking out onto the street to get into the back garden which has a locked gate so they can't get in unless they climbed over a seven foot fence um, and then put the parcel in a shed we don't have uh, and they did this on two consecutive occasions at Hermes um, I got it. Part of the problem with Hermes is they employ just people. It, anyone can just be a Hermes delivery and collection person. Um, it's kind of like a work from home thing. Um, and you kind of think sometimes that they just can't be bothered delivering stuff or they just think, oh, well, I'll keep this instead and say I've delivered it. Um, so I wasn't over impressed with them. But I do have this sort of this gap in sending stuff out. If it's under two kilos, if it's under two kilos, then um, the best way to send it, providing it fits in the size restrictions, which are a little bit limiting, but it's not too bad, is Royal Mail Second Class Post, by far the best way, um, money-wise. But there's this gap over two kilos, up to five kilos, um, then you can't really, um, you can't, I can't use my next day carrier because it becomes just that little bit too expensive. There's this sort of gap in price. So uh, I use Hermes between two and five kilos and it just, it can save like two to three pounds off using the carrier. So, um, that's my sort of preferential way of doing it. Um, but I was getting the Hermes parcels picked up. There's you know, a range for them. I book them with um, parceltogo.com, like a broker site. You put in your weight and dimensions, it gets you the best pricing. And I was getting them picked up, but my local Hermes guy, uh, he went on holiday, but oh, he didn't say he'd gone on holiday, he just arranged for a pickup, never came one day. Next day, never came. Three days later, I arranged another pickup and still had the first parcel and then never came for the next one. At which point I was like, what? Why is no one turning up? So I thought, right, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna find the parcel drops. You know, it's 20p cheaper to drop it off somewhere, but I thought, oh, if they're gonna pick it up, but they weren't picking it up. So um, in the end, I dropped them off. And then two days later, he turns up for the parcels I'd taken off the parcel drop. I'm like, well, I took them in, no one was picking them up. Uh, and he says, oh, well, I was on holiday in Spain for a week and a half, and someone else is supposed to be doing it, and he's only done half the work. <laughs> he's picked what he wants to do. He says, I've been going round and I've been getting an earache of all these people because these parcels from a week and a half ago not being collected. And he's having to go around and pick them up. So, anyway, and then... I had a few more collections off him, then I did a collection, didn't turn up again. Uh, so that night I was like, right, I'm going to take it to the parcel drop. So I took it to the parcel drop, and it would not been since, so all of them now I'm just dropping them in, because there are two petrol stations and so I pass all the time take them, so I'm just save 20p, Ooh, 20p on me, um, my shipping and drop them in. So I dropped that Hermes parcel in um, before setting off, but um, on the whole... The deliveries don't seem bad. I'd be worried about deliveries in my area if someone's sending it to me, uh, as he's not picking up parcels at the moment. He's maybe not dropping them off either, but everywhere else it seemed to get, they just takes quite a while, um, but good value. Right, I'm going to pick this up shortly. Ah, before I do though, um, small advertising break. Don't forget to eat at the Tasty Tatty, as sponsored by At Dale Suds or Mr. Six Screens. Enjoy your food at the Tasty Tatty. And for more adverts like this, you can buy one for $5 on Fiverr.com. So, advertising break. Catch you in a minute. And welcome back. Now, the eagle eyed among you will have noticed that I've moved location. And uh, what actually happened is uh, I set off back via Salby Bridge. Um, a, it was rammed with traffic uh, because the schools should have been out already, but were. Um, so there were just all the schools are leaving, and there was all the parents driving kids home and kids everywhere. And, 
took forever. And the other thing was I had a complete mental block. <laughs> I got about five minutes through what I was doing and then my brain just went and I couldn't think what I was going to say at all. I couldn't think of anything. Um, so I just cut it dead there. Uh, so I'll leave it there and uh, I was going to leave it at that and just have like a little five minute section at the end. And then I thought, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do redo it on the way back because I did such a bad job and then while I was stuck in all the traffic going through I remembered all the things I was going to say in the first place which is why I quite often do cheat sheets so there you are so we're back again and we're gonna try and finish off where we started so what I was talking about uh, before I cut that bit off anyway was um, gaming been playing lego harry potter still on the playstation now i've been quite enjoying this uh, with the youngest plodding through it all but mainly because um i hadn't really realized well i don't I've never tried it but i've been on um, we've been playing the games on um ipads on ios and also on the playstation vita so it's kind of a one person thing and then when he gets stuck, he hands it over to me and goes, oh, do this, I can't do this bit. Um, but the PlayStation one, I'd never thought about it. You can play two-player. So, um, with your two controllers, you can control two characters and you both run about. And it kind of goes split-screen a bit if you disappear off in different directions and are nowhere near each other. Um, but on the whole, it's, um, it's great fun doing it two player because it means when he gets stuck I don't have to um, I don't have to um, you know take over the game because you're playing alongside each other so I can just help out as I go along and we can help each other figure things out and funny enough I need a lot of help figuring things out sometimes he works out the puzzles before I do um, but on the whole, yeah, it's um, been great fun. So we've been playing Lego Harry Potter. I think that's years five to seven in the series because there's a few different variations of them as well. Um, I know that from looking up the cheat code, not cheat codes, but the, you know, the walkthroughs when it gets stuck on a certain bit and you can't figure out what you're meant to be doing. Um, but yeah, it's been really enjoying that. So um, it's been a good tip. They had a, um, they had a half price sale on them in the, the Play Store. I didn't go in there because he spotted all the Lego things. Get that. I was like, right, well, I'm not getting anything you've already got on the iPads and also on the um, the Vita. So that pretty much cut everything off just about, apart from this particular one. So, um, but I'm getting it for half price, so I suppose that wasn't too bad uh, as a download. So we've been enjoying that, and then also found, um, well I'd noticed already, but kind of got the time to watch uh, a film, and seen there's a new Scooby-Doo film about, so I um, so I thought we'll give that a go, and it, it's Scooby-Doo Rock and Roll Mystery featuring Kiss. Now, um, I mean, I remember Kiss from a long, long time ago. And I don't think they're really much of a UK band anyway, because I think they were more American. Um, so, but I remember they did crazy, crazy nights. These are crazy, 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 crazy nights. Uh, and they've, they've done all sorts of other stuff as well. Uh, but probably more memorable for having um, the four mem band members having sort of white makeup faces then with black sort of weird symbols on um, and one of them stick with so is ridiculously long tongue out a lot as well but um, other than that and um, so they were featured in this film so um, it's obviously a Scooby-Doo mystery about Kiss at, at, at a theme park around Kiss but funny enough, it's quite a good film I really I think I enjoyed it more than the lad did um, and there's some great songs in it as well. Um, not that, I've, you know, I've not really been 
a Kiss fan particularly, but I, I really enjoyed the songs that they put in the film. They obviously put the, perhaps the more memorable ones in to encourage more people to watch the film. Um, there's a particularly good one which is called um, I Was Made For Loving You. It's, um, um, really catchy tune to it and um, so yeah been watching that Scooby-Doo film really enjoyed that and um, obviously because of all this sudden Kiss revival I've been through went on to Apple Music stuck kissing everything they ever did on Apple Music um, so last few days my driving to and from work has been listening to listening to Kiss songs old and new um, and actually some quite good stuff in it I've just been rocking out in the car moshing away quietly to myself um, so yeah really enjoyed that um, now also we're going home a different way um, last night there's some temporary works at North Arm which is like halfway up on the way home uh, temporary roadworks I was stuck for oh a good half hour in a queue of traffic it was massive um, and it was a pain so I thought it's probably gone tonight but I'm not gonna risk it I'm gonna go back the way I come to work um, I come to work this way because going down the other way there's always a massive queue I've said this before always a massive queue at those stump cross lights because the main road um, takes up all the um, takes up all the room uh, and they always queue back through the lights on the main road and you can't come in down and get through it which takes forever it's annoying so I come this way normally but I don't go back this way because this way can get quite busy on an evening and the other way is just like straight through generally but um, I'm coming back this way so you get to see this way in reverse and um, Obviously, the start of the vlog is going to have an entirely different route via um, Salby Bridge. So, um, the other thing I'd totally forgotten I was going to talk about, and I keep forgetting to talk, talk about it anyway, but was a, about vlogging generally, because I've been watching a fair few different peoples. Obviously, my main viewer, of which there's not many to start off with, but the main viewer, Bob, uh, and Bob's vlogs was kind of part of the inspiration uh, for me doing this in the first place which I manage now uh, we're in September and I started January time you know it could well be I'm gonna manage to have done one of these every week for nearly a year well if I manage to next January I'll have done a year's worth it's be quite amazing resolve for me um, it's not often I can stick to doing something that isn't work for so such a long amount of time um, not that there's a huge amount of effort required in me talking to this while I'm driving uh, other than just putting it all together at the end of it and uploading it and even that's not particularly hard work could be hard work if I had a good, a good job of it talking of doing a good job of it now I'm not really sure how I ended up following Casey Neistat and Neistat um, on YouTube and I have a sneaking suspicion because lots of other people I follow on Twitter that watch YouTube also seem to watch him I, I don't know whether the, it there was not one of these sort of like YouTube kind of subscribe me automatically in some sort of weird kind of you know we, we're gonna up this particular content producer to encourage content producers to improve produce better content or something I don't know maybe they did that because he I mean, Casey and his start, if you watch any of the vlogs, I mean, he does a vlog like a vlog every single day, just about, which is kind of incredible in itself. But every single one is a work of art. It, it's like, it's, it's like perfect cinematography. It's a combination of, it. he's got like locked off camera shots of him, and then he might have some time lapse shots of amazing locations. And the vlog's interspersed with music perfectly it fades in and out and oh it's just it's gorgeous it really is I mean you can just watch it because you know you're gonna watch a vlog and see some just amazing videography and but how he manages it and does one a day and makes them all so magical I don't know it's incredible it really is um, 
but yes, um, Casey and Estella, if you, I mean, I, I imagine everyone's watched it, because I'm quite sure YouTube auto-subscribers to it, but it, it is kind of inspiring that you think, damn, I wish I could do something half as good as that, really, it, instead of just me driving about in a car. Um, but then again, my daily life isn't as interesting as his, so just if you followed me around my daily life, it'd be me in a shed packing stuff and doing stuff on computers. That's not very interesting, is it, really? So, um, probably not. I mean, as far as filming stuff that's interesting, this is about as interesting of my life as things are, you know, driving to and from work or other places. That's about it. But there you are. So that kind of inspired me. But, I mean, there's a lot of content out there. Obviously, with Bob, Bob's vlogs... Um, and the content he produces, which you're gonna be is doing great works with now, Bob, uh, Mr. Bell, um, with um, these um, the sort of green screen thing, and then filming himself doing the product reviews and stuff. Quite impressive. I'd quite like to figure out how that's sort of done as well. Maybe one day, maybe. Um, but. Oh, the old brain's really struggling today. No, I was going to say as well, um, Dale Suds was another inspiration. He did some great vlogs of just him walking around and talking at the same time. But that was always very entertaining when he did videos. He's not got time to do videos now because he's got six monitors to look at instead. Um, and he's gone on holiday at the moment, so I hope he's enjoying himself wherever he's gone. He's probably been on holiday from the internet too, no doubt, but... Um, we shall see if, he, if he's about all on Twitter at any point. Um, but other content I've been enjoying... Um, Chris Perillo? Is it Perillo? Um, he produces some really just fun content and videos uh, and it strikes me right there's also Lamar Wilson um, there's a few others as well have this sort of like really energetic like super energized style to it so different people have different styles of, of doing their videos and talking and whatever else um, but Chris Perilla tends to get really like excited in it as well but it, it's really compulsive viewing um, because he gets so excited and he sort of winds himself up and whatever else and blasts out at it. So, um, and we've been watching a lot of the content. I mean, kind of sidetracking a little bit, but something that has been really, I've been impressed with from Sphero. Um, not that I'm going to get one because I got the Ollie. Um, now, I'm not sure if I'm kind of upset about that or not because I do like the Ollie very much, but Sphero produced a BB-8 droid for, of course, Star Wars Force Awakens. So the new Star Wars film out in December has a droid that's basically a ball uh, with this sort of head on it that, that somehow stays on and the ball spins and the head stays on top. Quite amazing feat of itself. Now, you kind of think, well, that's easy enough to do with CGI to, to create a robot that is actually just a ball that zooms along with a head that somehow magically levitates of the ball at this right point all the time. But Sphero have managed to create one that works with your phone and you just you can control it or you can sit up on it so only it discovers stuff and it is kind of amazing. I've been watching again there's been a lot of obviously a lot of YouTube videos about unboxing and whatever else. But the, the, it's kind of a magical thing to see. You can set it off on patrol and it'll just roll itself about the room and the head somehow stays at the right point most of the time. Occasionally it falls off, but most of the time it stays in the right point. Um, and and yeah, it's um, it's kind of amazing the BB-8 droid. And Chris Perillo did one, uh, and then sort of an unboxing review of it. And obviously he's a huge sort of geek fan of Star Wars and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so he was like massively, massively um, into it, um, and hilarious. <laughs> kind of hilarious for me, I don't know. but it is um, young baby. Um, it was called a Jedi, 
and I just find that just the best thing ever. It does kind of still make me a little bit depressed that um, Callum, my youngest, <laughs> I wanted to call him Tiberius, but the missus wouldn't allow it. <laughs> And if you don't get the link, James T. Kirk from Star Trek, the, the T's for Tiberius. Um, and that, that would, I thought, would have, that would have been a great sort of geeky name for my son, but I wasn't allowed. Oh, those missed opportunities, eh? So, yes, um, Chris Perilla. But Lamar Wilson, I was watching Lamar Wilson the other night, one of his videos as well. Uh, and it was quite a good vlog. With, it was kind of a vlog and an unboxing of an Apple dot. It's one of the new Apple docks, and he just wanted to see if it fitted with his bumper, which it didn't fit with the bumper, so he's going to take it back, which I thought was great. Um, but also, it, it was just, it was really sort of a, a um, an enthralling style to see him just talking generally about um, his sort of doing vlogs and doing videos in his viewership and how he found he had lots of different people do different things watching for different things. So someone watched for vlogs and someone watched for boxings and someone watched for technology. Um, but it was kind of resolved on, you know, I do what I do because I like doing it and this is the way I'm going to do it. And people say, well, why don't you do it this way or change your style or just stick with this because I only like you doing unboxings and so stick with the unboxings. And, and it's kind of like, well, no, I, I, it's my content. I want to do it how I want to do it, which is very fair enough. But at the same point, he's also got a massive viewership as well. So he's obviously doing something right, uh, and people like listening to him. So good on him. But so generally, yeah, I'm just I was kind of inspired by all these great content producers um, that maybe I would like to do more better content uh, and you know make some different sort of video effects in and stuff. Uh, the Casey and the Stat stuff is just amazing what he does. Um, but I lack entirely the time to, to spend doing all that sort of all that sort of malarkey. Um, much as it'd be nice to, to even give it a go at doing some of it. But um, it'd be interesting though what uh, what if other channels or people's vlogs people watch so that I can check out any that I'm missing out on already. Maybe get a few more bits of inspiration. Um, but um, yeah. Now, what else was I gonna talk about? Ooh, uh, pretty much running out now, but we're not far from home. If we can get through these lights before the change, or just go through them into the change. No, don't do that, that's naughty. Um, so, Yeah, YouTube content generally. I mean, I've actually reached the point where I've got more, I'm sub to more stuff that I can keep up the track, <laughs> keep track of watching. I really have. Um, but the, there's some great content and really entertaining stuff out there. I quite like the unboxings still. Um, in some ways, I'm kind of conscious that some of them I watch just because I know it helps the person that's produced it out more than I'm physically that interested in what's been unboxed. But on the whole, um, I don't mind watching stuff in it because it is kind of an entertaining. Um, although I have sneakily managed to uh, make myself a way of being able to easily browse through Twitter while watching YouTube on the MacBook Air. I've um, I've added in um, a sec some second display software, X Display, I think it is. I'm using. In the end, there's a few different. It seems that'll do the same job. Um, so I can use the um, the iPad Air, not no, the iPad Air. I've got an iPad Air uh, for the missus really because she was getting fed up with the iPad 2 because it was too slow and it wasn't doing the right things and it kept crashing all the time. Um, so, but you still use the iPad 2 and the iPad Air together now because it's got more things to look at um, when she's shopping online. Mm. Uh, so, anyway, so with the iPad 2, 
basically I'll plug that in with X display and then I can use that as a, a bit of a second display and put Twitter on it. Now, of course, someone will say, well, why don't you just put a Twitter app on the iPad 2 and then use that? But the thing is, if you're in front of the trackpad and keyboard, it's easier to control it while watching the YouTube video with the trackpad and then if you're going to type a tweet or anything in between, um, use the keyboard that you're in front of rather than trying to bring up a... Where's this girl going to... Then bring up the... Um, oh, there's like stuff everywhere now. Bring up the... Uh, uh, virtual keyboard, if you've just got a dedicated Twitter app going on, uh, and do it that way. So, yeah. Right, well, I am done for the second time now. This is going to be a mammoth length this this week's vlog as well. So, sorry, Bob, that's going to keep you occupied for a while. I'll give you a few weeks to watch it or something. So, have a good weekend. Enjoy next week. Uh, I'll probably try and uh, prepare myself for next week's one a bit better again, and then that'll fail, but never mind. Right, see ya.